Hi, I'm Daphne Richards. Thanks to our unusually wet, cool spring, I've noticed lots of bacterial and fungal issues in local landscapes and gardens. Cool, wet conditions are perfect for the growth of many fungi and bacteria that we don't see most years, so we forget about them. But the spores are there, just waiting for conditions to be right. Then they burst onto the scene to take advantage of their uncommon good fortune. Oak leaf blister was rampant on our live oaks again this year, and black spot on our roses was also particularly bad. And in Adkins, some of George Burns' cataniasters have browning branches, while others look fine. This damage looks like fire blight, a bacterial disease common to certain plant families and devastating to some fruit trees such as pear and apple. George has had these plants for about 10 years and pruned them this spring. Well, George, the pruning likely didn't have anything to do with your fire blight problem. This bacterium normally develops in cankers in the woody tissue, then moves to infected tender new growth as it's developing and more vulnerable to invasion. When it rains in spring, spores get bounced from stems and branches into flowers and new growth, infecting the tissue and starting the process over again. Fire blight's cyclical with alternate plant hosts, so it may not even be a problem most years. In your situation, I'd recommend pruning out the affected areas, making sure to clean up any leaf or branch litter around the plant. Late winter next year, check the bark for any oozing cankers and prune those out, making sure to toss all of that infected plant material into the garbage. If the problems persist, consider removing these plants and replacing them with species that are not susceptible to fire blight. Our plant this week is the David Austin Rose Abraham Darby. Last winter, Kristen Rosen won it in our online contest, and since then, she can't resist stopping to smell the roses. Indeed, this is a very fragrant shrub rose with lovely, delicate pink apricot flowers. This rose was named to celebrate inventor Abraham Darby, who, with his son and grandson, played an important role in the Industrial Revolution. Most roses bred by English plantsman David Austin are breathtaking, and many will do well in our climate. So if you're planting roses, you should consider them. But do your research. Some are not as tolerant of our heat and drought as we'd like them to be. Others have challenges that you need to be aware of. Like this Abraham Darby, which needs support in order to look its best. A garden obelisk with an open center for the rose to grow through would be best. But if you're a picky gardener like me and can't find one to suit your aesthetic, consider arranging three or four trellises into a circle to contain your rose. As with most roses, you'll need to plant Abraham Darby in bright sunlight and water it regularly, and it will also benefit from protection from the heat of late afternoon of the blasting sun. It should be pruned regularly, but not as hard as hybrid teas and many other roses. Shrub roses prefer to be just that, shrubs. Viewer pictures this week feature butterflies. Kyla Rogers discovered a newly opened Gulf fritillary chrysalis on her red yucca. Soon after, it flew off to get its first meal. And Kirsten Chapman has been raising monarchs at home and in her classroom. This one was number 42 of the monarchs raised in her butterfly cage at home. And here's another on a Greg's Mist flower. She got lots of native wildflowers in her backyard and in May discovered many leaves with eggs and early instars of monarch larvae. And we'd love to hear from you. So please head on over to carolru.org and send us your questions, pictures, and video.